Now you need to know that he's righteous and just to forgive them. They're gone. So that is the point. The point isn't, well, you didn't confess your sins, so you're going to hell. I mean, we scare little kids to death, man. When I was a kid, I, I was afraid every night going to bed thinking there was something I didn't ask forgiveness for, so I'd be going to hell. Come on now. That's no freedom. That's bondage. Tell them the good news. You don't have to worry about when you go to bed, is there something I did I shouldn't have done? You've been forgiven. You are well, okay? And just go on and be well. I'm telling you, when we loose the bondage of condemnation, we find ourselves more productive even as children of God. We walk around <clears throat> all jacked up. Churches, a lot of times churches need to get a hold of this particular concept. Even the bondage that's placed on people about not paying their tithes, okay? I'm telling you, just loosen up off of that. <clears throat> I guess the tithe is the only issue that's not dealt with at Calvary. You're cursed you know, if you don't go there. But no, look at, look at the tithe and the offering deal, okay? I'm telling you, there's, a study has been made that, that the average tithe, tithe so-called, is supposed to be 10%. Now you got, you got churches arguing over whether it's gross or whether it's net. Come on now. But anyway, the tithe is supposed to be the 10th. I don't exactly know where that comes from either, except from Melchizedek, one particular incidence in, in, in Scripture that it was 10%. But, but that's not the case. Okay, we're looking at tithe. When you mandate tithe to folks, again, a study was made, and the average that folks pay tithe in church is $25. $25 a week is the average in tithe that people pay. Now, you know folks make, a lot of times, a lot more money than that, but they don't pay any more than that. I'm telling you, in that condemnation, in that forcing, in that negativity, well, you must, you must, you must. I mean, there is no freedom in that. There is no grace. There is no mercy in that. It, uh, it changes when it comes to money. But I'm telling you, if churches would begin to back off of that, and begin to minister love and, and, and the reality of relationship. And people are really feeling the love and relationship in the ministry. There will not a need go by that's not being met. Now that minister may not be driving an Escalade or, <laughs> or a Rolls Royce, you know. Or, you got it. You know, or maybe they will, you know. Who knows? There's a lot of hoopla going around now, you know, with the government as far as checking out churches is... I don't know how we got here, but as far as, you know, whether they're spending their money right, you know. And, you know, I'll tell you personally, and I, and I had this discussion with some Christians, and uh, I had a couple agree with me, and most of them didn't. But I would, I would like to see the tax-exempt status basically get yanked from churches, you know, period. Because I believe that you'll begin to see You'll begin to see, you know, who's left. You'll begin to see who's for real. You know, and, I, and I'll tell you, if you, you know, I look at sort of like, you know, Gideon in the army that he used uh, to defeat the Midianites, where he had thousands and thousands of men, you know, that come with him to fight, and God said, no, no, uh -uh. get rid of these, get rid of those, get rid of these. And they whittled those men of Gideon all the way down to a few hundred. Because, because God didn't want anyone ever to believe, Israel ever to believe that they defeated the enemy by their own might. He wanted them to know that it was by the hand of God. And what I'm suggesting today is we begin to weed out some of the ministries. We begin to weed out some of the, the, the ministries that, were, that, were, that, that seemed to be uh, just a money, a, gener a corporation. You know, I used to love to watch old westerns with my father. And, and, you know, and I wasn't even hardly a believer. You know, I was raised in church and all. But, I mean, I wasn't serious, you know, like I am today. But, you know, one thing that always impressed me, when you go into that little dusty, poor Mexican town, you know, and you'd have that one padre there who, who really didn't have any, much more than the people themselves. And then you find a real poor man who's really down in his luck and he's trying to feed his family. And that padre would go in his own money box and give this man all that he had. You know, where are those Padres today? I'm telling you, you, we wonder why things are pretty jacked up. In my city, they've just built, you know, I minister at the Juvenile Detention Center, they've just built a new facility that has a lot more beds, a lot more room, so that the, the situation in our communities aren't getting any better, they're getting worse, and we're just making preparations. I'm telling you, as we begin to get really serious about the 20%, about that which we know, and begin just to, to rid ourselves of all these little bickering things uh, that, we, that we seem to have embraced, that we argue about the little peddly things, piddly things. 
and begin to focus on the love of Jesus for real and begin to, in truth, seek God for our lives to be well. God, it's not just about my closet. Take 80% of the clutter out of my life so that that part of you that is for real, that part of you that is true, gets stronger, stronger so that I can be an influence in the lives of my children and influence in my community, in my state, in my country, in my world. I'm telling you, things will begin to change. It's the truth that will make us free. We need to begin rejecting the things that we've bought into that we don't really know that we've been stating as fact and just embrace Jesus hard and begin to grow there and walk with God every day and begin to seek to be enlightened, begin to seek truth. God, fill me with enlightenment. Fill me with your truth. Let me see how you see. Let what makes you happy make me happy. Let what makes you sad make me sad. Take everything out of me that's not like Christ. Fill me afresh with your spirit. These are the things we need to be praying. Put me in a place to be used by you to minister to the lives of those who you love, those who, you, who are in need, and change me in the process. Let me be closer to you, be brought closer to you in relationship. Create a love in me for you that I haven't yet felt in the name of Jesus. Next day, thank God for making it happen, even though you don't have the physical manifestation of it, and then ask for more. We'll let me run out of time. I got a little carried away, I know. But I want to thank you once again for joining me for another perspective. I want to leave you with this one truth you know. It's that God truly, truly, truly loves you. He really, really does. And so do I.